Welcome to 180 U-Turn, the show that features the greatest conversion stories of our time. Stories of men and women who are on the highway to hell and when they encountered a Damascus Road event that completely turned their lives around. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Savant, and today I'm broadcasting live from Alongside Ministries in Phoenix, Arizona, one of the premier transitional facilities for former felons for drug and alcohol abuse. For more information on their prison outreach, weekly meetings, and special events, just hop out to their website and check it out at alongsideministries.com, and that's alongside ministries.com. And hey, if you want to write me at my uh, email, it's steve at 180uturn.com. That's steve at 180youturn.com. I'd be happy to answer as many questions as I can. Again, just keep those doctrinal issues to the side. Well, we're on day three with Vanessa Morales. Welcome, Vanessa. Thank you for having me. Uh, great story so far, and I'm, and I'm so sorry that we have to go down another whole, uh, descent. Uh, but the thing about I like about these stories is that people that respond that are not believers on our show respond to it say i i just thought there's no way she could dig herself out of this mm -hmm. and so tomorrow's show will be the glorification of everything we're talking about now because yeah. it's dark now you got you were talking about you know your, your child has been taken away right um not at this point yet um okay so but, so but that threat of cps was a pretty big one yes and you were in jail Yes. But that the threat of CPS and jail did modify your behavior. Correct, it did right. not. Okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I can I can understand, you know, at least you could say, Hey, listen, I, I need to straighten this out. I can't lose my child. You know. So your marriage is on the rocks and heading for divorce. Yes. Uh it's still tipsy whether CPS could come in or not if you don't straighten up. Yes. So but did you straighten up at all? Did you try to change your way in any way in your behavior? I didn't. It it um it maybe put a fear in me for maybe a month. Mm -hmm. Um but at this point, you know, now I have a mess of problems. Now um, you know, we're going to have to put our house up for sale. Now I'm going through a divorce and mm -hmm. moving in with my parents. And, I and lost... your parents put money up for this house. Yes, yeah, sure did. Which is another hurtful thing. Yeah, very hurtful. Um and and embarrassing and full mm -hmm. of that, that that was added guilt and shame to this and, you know because it was a because of mm -hmm. me you know because mm -hmm. of my mistakes and um you know I, I and then on top of it i lose my career right there in 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 the healthcare where i mm -hmm. you know was really thriving and enjoying it and loving it this was a possible career for the rest of your life absolutely it was a it was my career absolutely it was and um and it was all gone in 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 mm. that with that with that decision. And so, I was. It was kind of like you know most people would say, yeah, I need to clean up. I'm in mm -hmm. trouble. I need help. And I used it as justification to not care. Mm -hmm. I had nothing else to lose. Um, I felt you know. Um, I just thought, oh well, you know, like it just gave me more of an excuse to go down that path mm -hmm. now when you started when you started experimenting additionally with op opioids and you're already doing Vicodin and Percocet what else are you doing beside when you say you're experimenting with it is it more than that yeah there was no experimenting it was a full-blown addiction very quickly okay but then why did you shift from the opiates opiates to heroin well, um, there was a, a point where my parents were like, okay, this is it. You know, like, you need to go to detox. We're mm -hmm. taking you to detox. And Been there before, though. Uh, been there right. before, right. you know, but it was kind of like, this is serious, mm -hmm. you know, and you cannot live here. You can't, you know, we're not going to help you anymore, you know, until you get help. And mm -hmm. it was another one of those things, well, I got nothing else to do, so I, I have no other choice. So I'm gonna go to detox. I'm gonna try, but mm -hmm. I think at that point I really, d I really wanted the struggle to be over. You know, it's what, just one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. Like I didn't want to anymore, but I just couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. it, there was no longer a choice. It mm -hmm. was I, cu I couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. You know, and but but in my heart at this point, I wanted to be done. In in. But but done wasn't enough. No. Okay. Now when I'm thinking of you know so far you've stayed pretty straight. I mean not the cocaine issue, but you've kind of left that at the side, right? Because the opi opioids took over on that. Yeah. But 
how did you ever get into heroin? Because nobody, you know, when you're a little girl, you don't sit there and say, I want to be the bad guy in the neighborhood. You know, I want to be a shooter. You know, nobody yeah. does that. Yeah. Unfortunately, in those detox centers, you are surrounded by people who are trying to get clean and who are at a very vulnerable, dangerous place. Um, I did meet um, a guy in there that, um, you know, I got along with off the bat, you know, and entertained that. And before I knew it, I was leaving detox with him. Mm -hmm. And he was a heroin addict. So um, it was as soon as I left, I just, I was getting sick. I wasn't getting the care that I was mm -hmm. getting impatient and I just left with him and to go get high thinking I could get pain pills. Mm -hmm. But that's when uh, another unfortunate series of events happened where I got introduced to heroin. Okay. And when you were introduced to heroin, some people that get into heroin start out uh, in the more what I would call not that it's safe, but it's maybe a little bit mitigated. Uh, they, they're, they're smoking it. They're not shooting it. And you went right into shooting it right away. Did did in yeah. your mind? Did you ever say, "Well, yeah, that's a little out there," that, you know? I've done a lot of things, but I'm not crossing that line. Or no, that was not even a consideration. No, because I wasn't familiar with that drug and how it worked, mm -hmm. so I didn't know what my options were. Mm -hmm. I just saw what he was doing, and so I followed suit. Mm -hmm. And he's helping you shoot up. Yes. Because you're you're, you're a rookie. You're, you don't know what you're doing. I mean, I I knew what I know what I'm doing when it comes to that, but. I did. I was scared. It made me nervous, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, yeah, I wanted him to do it because I didn't know how much. I didn't know, mm -hmm. you know. I, I was just a little bit nervous to do it myself. Mm -hmm. And you've lost your job at healthcare. Mm -hmm. Your child now is with CPS, right? They took your child from you. N um, not at this point. Um, my. It, it, it came shortly after that because mm -hmm. my parents, this was the last opportunity. You know, I had, I I was really going on thin ice here. Mm -hmm. And, but yes, my child is with my parents, but my parents were not allowing me to see her mm -hmm. and were, would call the police because they did place restraining orders because mm -hmm. I was not in my right state of and mind. And not only divorce CPS with your child, heroin, now you're completely homeless. Yes. Are you living on the streets? Yes. I, I'm trying to imagine, and I'm sure our viewers are too now, the Vanessa we see here today living on the streets. Yes. it's It just makes, it evokes sorrow in me, to be it's honest with you. Very real. Well, and, and, and what happened? Are you, are you living underneath where? Where are you living? Um, I'm living, you know, uh, all of us as addicts know, we, we jump drug house to drug house. Mm -hmm. We sleep under bridges. We don't even sleep. So mm -hmm. that really doesn't become an issue. All you're caring about is being out there, coming up with your next high, um, the next hustle to come up with the money to get those drugs. And so I very quickly turned to the street lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say, you know, it's, there's money. This costs money to play this game. Yes. Okay, so when you ran out of what I would call legit hustles, if there is such a thing, uh, <laughs> you now we're dropping into criminality. Absolutely. So talk about that little dip of your toe. You know, you didn't, you really weren't a person. You don't want to steal. You know, you're not that kind of person. But now you have no choice. Yeah, you, you, you lose the power of somewhere along the lines that the conscious you know the good conscience of like man i can't do that mm -hmm. you know it, it there is no it, you're desperate you don't mm -hmm. want to get sick you don't want to run out you know you have to do what you have to do so mm -hmm. just put all those worries to the side and you just get it done so unfortunately there was you know um burglaries that took place mm -hmm. robberies boosting um boosting make sure everybody knows what you're talking about um cars mm -hmm. stores i mean you know um i was a, a partner in 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 crime mm -hmm. you know Ever with, get caught with the mail these little things uh not with any of those mm -hmm. but with the boosting yes um there's a series of you know uh, misdemeanors that are mm -hmm. too many to count that I've encountered. I mean, you ha you have a pretty big rap sheet when it comes to this stuff. I do have a it's rap sheet. It's all public sheet. domain. It's yeah, so, yeah, yes. yeah. So, so when you're doing all these things, you know, it's just like you, it's, it, I always think about that verse in the Bible where it says, you know, your conscience is seared. Yes. Right? It's seared. There's nothing can get in. It's too calloused. 
right? It's yes. just so hardened, right? And uh, you don't, you know, and, and of course we know you because of what the Lord has done in your life, but, but it's so hard to conceive a person doing these things and going that far out, right? Yes. Living in terrible situations. I mean, Awful most of these houses are, the, the, the two that I was in was just terrible. I mean, I'm not, I wasn't involved personally. I'm just seeing it, trying to get somebody out of there. Uh, terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Um, talk about some of, you know, this, and, and then the thing on top of this, the crime, and and really no conscience about the morality of any of that, you're, you, you have you started a whole cycle of unhealthy relationships with guys. Yes. That were never good for you. And you knew that going in. See, this is what I, I would like you to, to talk a little bit about this. Just to see if we could stop somebody that's watching this show yeah. and says, you know, I, I, I'm in that right now, mm -hmm. right? You have flags, you have characteristics yes. that you see now, and you helped other people here. That's what you do. Yes. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So, I mean, there's definitely no such thing as a healthy relationship in that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to knock any of, you know, the past relationships I was in because they weren't in a place to maintain a healthy relationship. Um, I do think that they're good people outside of drugs, but, um, you know, the abuse that took place. Physical abuse. Uh, not just physical, but emotional and mm -hmm. mental as well. And just all of the tragedy that comes with it, you know, of being... Why are women okay with that? I didn't have respect for myself and I thought that I couldn't do better because I was an addict myself and mm -hmm. so you kind of settle for what you are like mm -hmm. who am I to demand a healthy man that can take care of help mm -hmm. take care of me and mm -hmm. be good to me when I how can I demand that when I can't be that mm -hmm. You know, so my so my, but how much of this? You remember, even even going back to the first show, how much of this is self-imposed, though? You know, so you know, it's one thing. I mean, your mom and dad aren't telling you when you're a little girl. You know, you're a jerk. You're going to be a loser all your life. Nobody's talking to you like that. No. So you know, a lot of this is self-imposed. Then you hang around people who you know. Hey, I thought this guy was my friend. He just beat the living daylights out of me. Yeah. Right. And people that are watching this who haven't went through that, they go, "You seem smart." You do. You seem smart. You're articulate. Why did you tolerate it? And you just answered it by saying, basically, you know, I sunk to the same level of the people I was hanging with. This is all I can afford. This is all I can do. Maybe this mm -hmm. is as good as it gets. For the women that are in those situations, you know, it's it, people are quick to judge. Like, yeah, why does she do it? Why does she put up with it? Mm -hmm. But really, you don't know what it's like to be in that situation until you're in that situation. Mm -hmm. And it's like there's, if you don't respect and love yourself as a woman, um, and it's kind of like that that false, like, heel change, mm -hmm. you know? It's very real, mm -hmm. you know? I thought, you can't get him to change, you mm -hmm. know? But it's very, it's very <laughs> real that you can think that, though, <laughs> you know? Right, I, I, I often, uh I often say when I when I first started going to prison uh, in an outreach, uh, I talked to this one gal and uh, she was giving her testimony. She just got done in front of all of the ladies on the yard, and she says, "Oh, and just before I step off, she goes, I just want you guys to know, the biggest reason why I'm in here is because I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing with the wrong guy." Yeah. <laughs> and everybody applauded because she just encapsulated in her clothes, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, everybody on the yard's problem, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, people do have a difficulty because they look at a person like yourself, you're articulate. What, what is, why would you tolerate that? Well, I think people are, are quick to point the finger at the man. Mm -hmm. But for me, honestly, um, I accept responsibility for mm -hmm. my piece as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, 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 you think like, okay, well, we just need to get sober. We just need to get clean. Mm -hmm. We just need to move past this, you know, like, but I'm, I'm just, I'm a guilty part. It's relationships are 50, 50, whether they're healthy or unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And I had to make the choice. I can, t I chose to stay. Mm -hmm. I had a choice. Could've left. I could have left, okay. but I didn't. You want to know why? Because I feel like those relationships, you're just as addicted to that relationship mm -hmm. as you are the drug. 
you know, you had so many, you were in and out of county jail down there so many times. I mean, you know, again, your resume, it, it looks like a rap sheet from hell. I mean, it's just it's yes. so longer. Your, your arrest finally came and you went to prison. How long did you go to prison? Uh, two and a half years. Two and a half years. And when you were there, just before this all happened, your, um, you started coming, you actually started using language like fix me or I'm going to die. I need to either die or God, if you, you got to come in and fix me. Yes. All right. And mm -hmm. I mean, so you're right at, you're not there yet, but you're on the edge, right? You're fed up. Yeah. You've had it. When do you know when you've had it? You know, do you, can you describe that feeling or where it's like, hey, I'm, I'm willing to do it. And if it's God, I'm, I'm there. Um, so, you know, God didn't come for me until later, right. you know, um, I kind of just shunned that because I w had so much guilt and shame. But at this point, you know, CPS had gotten involved mm. because my parents had had enough. They wanted to protect the safety of my daughter and thank God I hated them for mm -hmm. it when they did it. But I thank them and I love them for it and you've told now them right. today. And I've told them that yes, oh, and I'll continue to you. tell them that good for you. That it was the best decision they ever made, but I didn't see it that way at the mm -hmm. time. Sure. Uh, I only use it as an excuse to be angry mm -hmm. and continue to use more um, you know but yes my addiction at that point all bets were off mm -hmm. I didn't have my career in healthcare anymore I didn't have a husband I didn't have a house I didn't have my family I didn't have anything mm -hmm. but the clothes on my back mm -hmm. and so um, all bets were off and yeah. and unfortunately mm -hmm. I had many many overdoses which mm -hmm. resulted to being in the hospital um, and that didn't wake you up no see this is this is what I mean. you almost died a, yeah. couple, a couple times mm -hmm. a couple times I would think that you know there'd be some shock and awe in almost dying that would wake you out of your stupor and say hey I need to change this is I, I gotta find out what's going on here yeah it was really like, okay, I got some rest. Now we're getting out, and now I got to go find a fix. Yeah, I can start all over. Well, unbelievable. Well, we're going to continue our story, and of course, we're going to talk about, hey, finding God in prison. I love stuff like this, yes. right? I mean, I live for this, and I've seen yeah. so many people come to the Lord in state prison, jail, in and out of the country. I mean, boy, when you're sitting in jail, and this is God, I, God should be our first choice, and he's always the the guy of the last resort. Unfortunately, yes. Unboy, unbelievable. Well, listen, for more information on all the prison outreach, weekly meetings, and special events that we have for Alongside Ministries, which is one of the part things that helped Vanessa for sure, yes. I want you to go out to their website, alongsideministries.com, and check out all that's going on and stories that could really help you, especially if you're struggling with some of the issues that Vanessa talks about. Just go out to their site, alongsideministries.com. That's alongside dash ministries.com. So until next time, I'm Steve Savant, and remember, no one's outside the reach of God. No, not one.